Is this the ultimate ITX AM4 motherboard? Well, this is the Biostar X370 GTN. It is an X370 ITX motherboard, which is a little bit of a confusing thing, and we'll get into that in a second, but let's take a look. Starting off with a tour of the motherboard, obviously, as I said, it's an ITX motherboard, so there's a pretty small footprint to be had here, and not a lot of space for them to actually add a lot of features, so they've actually done a pretty good job. Starting off in the center, you have an AM4 socket. Obviously, this is compatible with both the current generation and the second generation of Ryzen CPUs with BIOS updates, which is obviously very nice to see. You have two DDR4 uh, DIMM slots for your RAM or memory, and uh, up to four SATA ports, uh, two on the right hand side and then another two just below the uh, RAM DIMM slots. On the bottom of the motherboard you have a full length X16 PCIe slot. This is in no way reinforced or anything, it's a standard PCIe slot so if you are installing a graphics card in this make sure that it is fairly well secured as it's not one that can necessarily take the full brunt of a graphics card or if you're for example shipping a system with this make sure that you take the graphics card out of this first otherwise it could break. On the top of the board, especially on the top right Right is where all of the kind of, well, I.O. seems to happen. You have two RGB connectors. As it says on the board, these are for the standard 5050 RGB LED strips. That basically just means that it's for the standard common cathode uh, 12 volt and then uh, RG and B uh, anode connections, as you see with most motherboards. You also have a CP fan header and a system fan header. And as far as I can see, that's all on this board. So it's a little bit lackluster in terms of fan headers, especially if you plan on adding this on a slightly larger ITX case like the Bitfenix Portal for example uh, so yeah I'd like to see a few more. The audio codec on this motherboard is the ALC892 which is not quite the same as for example the Gigabyte B350 um, ITX board that one is the AB350 and that one has an ALC1220 codec so hypothetically a decently better audio setup here although this one does have a digital SPDIF out whereas this one doesn't they both still do have full 7.1 audio support Though. Speaking of the rear I.O., you do, as I said, have your audio connections. You also have USB Type-C, USB 3.1 Gen 2, four USB 3.0 or 3.1 Gen 1s, effectively, uh, as well as an HDMI port as well, and obviously Gigabit Ethernet using a Realtek controller. The board uses a single 4-pin for its CPU power delivery, so bear that in mind when you're looking at overclocking the CPU. I did also take the relatively small VRM heat sinks off and took a look, and it seems like it's a pretty decent overall VRM situation. Situation. It doesn't look like it, they've sort of cheaped out on this area, which is nice to see. But as I said, with that small VRM heatsink, I don't know whether you're going to really push really high overclocks on this. I'll come back to overclocking in a second, but I want to take a look at the back of the motherboard where you can see the M.2 slot. This is fairly common for a lot of motherboards, sort of hiding it on the back, and it's actually a nice place to put it as it means that you can install an SSD. And while it often doesn't get very good airflow, you still do often have the option of, say, adding a thermal pad to the back of it, which often contacts the case or the motherboard tray that you're mounting it to and all that sort of stuff. So there is some options available and it's definitely nice to see that available. Jumping into the BIOS, this is actually the first BIOSTAR motherboard I've ever looked at or used and I was actually pleasantly surprised by the layout of the BIOS. On the left hand side you have your information about your CPU and RAM, both the voltage and the frequency, and then you have a sort of main window which is a fairly basic BIOS. You have your tabs at the bottom, although uh, these are images until you hover over them with the mouse and you can go through each of the sections as you can hopefully see and you know change fairly all of the settings available. There was one sub menu that was left blank although uh, that may be updated in future BIOS revisions and stuff like that but the one page that I want to take a look at is the uh, o.n.e page or the one page which includes your overclocking and for some reason also the RGB settings. Overclocking the board was fairly easy it allowed me to select the XMP profile for the RAM which was nice to see. The only thing that I mentioned though is that you can't manually select select a voltage and I also couldn't see many of the voltages that were actually uh, you know should be available to see so for example you can change the voltage for the SOC uh, the, the chipset basically uh, which uh, Robert Halleck recommends to set to 1.1 volts if you want to get a, a bit more of a stable overclock and I can't see what that voltage is uh, maybe I'm missing a page here or something but uh, on the left hand side it only shows you the V core for the CPU and your DRAM uh, voltage uh, it doesn't actually show you any other that I can see which makes it a little bit difficult and because you only have the adjusted voltage 
if you don't know what the current existing voltage is, then adding something to it, you're kind of adding something to a number you don't know what it is, so it makes it a bit more difficult. It is a little bit annoying that you can't manually input a voltage, even if it was in a, still an adaptive mode where, you know, if the CPU isn't under load, it would undervolt the CPU. Uh, it's a little bit annoying that it's in that sort of, you can only do plus 0 0.01, 0 0.02 kind of thing, so uh, it'd be nice to see that added, but overall overclocking on the board was pretty decent, and my results were that with a 17 1500 non X, I was getting 3.9 gigahertz pretty stably. The VRMs did get up to about 80 degrees Celsius, which isn't too bad, but at the same time, it's probably worth not running that as your full time overclock, at least not under full CPU load anyway. I think with you know standard gaming load, you'd be all right with that sort of frequency on the board, so that's kind of nice to see. Now, by far the most confusing thing about this board is that it's an X370 board. AMD announced the X370 and B350 boards as basically the X370 is for SLI and crossfire setups and that's basically it, and the B350 board is for everything else. That's why the Gigabyte B350 board makes a lot of sense, but this one being X370, especially the fact that you physically cannot fit any more PCIe lanes on here, really doesn't make too much sense. Now I'm happy to say that they're not selling this at an X370 price, especially compared to, for example, the Gigabyte AB350N. Uh, so the actual pricing for this is almost identical to the Gigabyte board, so in, in that respect I'm actually pretty happy to recommend either of them. Uh, just again, it's a bit of a strange one that this is X370 and not B350. But with all that out of the way, I'm actually really impressed with this board. Is it the ultimate ITX motherboard for AM4? I'm not too sure if it's exactly the ultimate, I think, especially for you know long-term usability and stuff like that. I might personally prefer the Gigabyte board just because of, for example, the better audio codec that's available. Um, I think the I.O. is a little bit better on the Gigabyte board as well with a couple extra USB ports, so that's nice to see. And I think the Gigabyte board also uses an Intel NIC, which, again, personal preference, but I generally recommend that over the Realtek solutions just for longevity, reliability, and also even things like Linux support. The double RGB headers on the top of the board are nice, but at the same time, I don't know if it's necessarily uh, one of the key features, and I'd rather see one of those replaced with an extra four pin fan header, for example. Uh, and otherwise, overall, the, the layout seems decent. There's no, for example, USB 3.1 uh, Gen 2 front panel headers, but you really don't see that much on cases either right now, so that's not too big of a problem. Uh, as said, uh, just with that 4-pin, be careful if you are planning on overclocking, especially the 8-core Ryzen CPUs, as that may be a bit too much of a power draw for that uh, you know, connection. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you interested in this motherboard? Is this something that you planning on, are you planning on picking up, or is it more of a, an aspirational, you know, you want to build the ultimate sort of HTPC and this is the thing for you, or do you absolutely hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Moving on to the scoring, for me, this is going to be a 4.5 value money. Because of the 4-pin, CPU power connector and the VRM temperatures. I'm going to go with a 4.5 for performance here, although with a 8 pin and a little bit of a beefier VRM heatsink, this could easily be a 5. In terms of functionality, I'm going to go with, I think, a 4 as well, as I could see a few things being traded around, but otherwise, it's a pretty decent board. And in terms of styling, it's also going to be a 4. I think, in terms of the Tech Team EV score, it's going to be a 4 and a silver award, as it's a really impressive board. I highly recommend it, but there are a few other options that may be a little bit better and a few things that could be improved on the board for uh, even the X470 or the, the B470 version, which I'd probably recommend by a start look into. If you'd like to know any more about the motherboard, just take a look at the pricing when and where you watch this. Take a look at the link in the description down below. That'll hopefully take you to your local Amazon store. If you want to support the channel, keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis and now Saturdays for tech FAQs, then feel free to take a look at the Patreon link in the description down below. You can support me directly or Amazon and Overclock as get affiliate links where you can use those links when you buy from those places and massively help me out. You can also take a look at some of the other videos over here. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. So if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video.